Hey guys, we've got a special episode of the Friday Zone for you today. We're heading outside to check out the fun at the Indiana University Science Fest. Let's go! The week is done and it's time for fun. There's room for everyone in the Friday Zone. So much to see, who will we meet? It all happens magically in the Friday Zone. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the Gigacity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922 and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm at the IU Science Fest and we're going to check out some cool science and physics experiments. Come on, let's go check it out. Ooh, I think I found something. So what's going on here? We've got a dry ice bowling rink set up a here for you. dry ice bowling rink? Want to try it out? I mean, I'm so down. Yeah, I put some gloves on first. Oh, some gloves? Okay. CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay. And uh, at this pressure, it's about minus 78 degrees Celsius. Oh, wow. So we got to make sure we have gloves on. But as it goes down this rink, it's going to slowly turn into a CO2 gas. A gas. It's going to ride on that cloud all the way down. Oh, so it's it's not even touching it? Um, it, it, it whenever it touches this uh, stainless steel, the temperature conducts to the stainless steel, and it okay. turns straight from a solid into a gas. It, it skips the liquid phase. Oh, wow. And so it rides on that little cloud on the, all the way okay, down. Okay, cool. Well, let me try to see Go if I can bullet strike. Oh, let's got one more. I got one. I got one more. Oh. Got um. Good well, job. so cool. So it's not even touching that at all, or what? as it touches it, it builds up a little layer of uh, carbon dioxide. You might actually be able to hear it uh, squeal as it bounces okay. up and down on top of it. You hear that? Whoa. So as it's melting, it's creating yeah. a little pocket of air and it jumps up and down on that little pocket of air. Oh, wow. That sounds crazy. <laughs> well, so, this is such a cool experiment. Thank you so much for showing me. Not I a appreciate problem. it. Have a good day. You too. Want to give it a shot? So put on some gloves. All right, guys, so I'm here with Sam and Carson, and I think he's gonna show us a little trick that I've only seen in the movies, is it? But I don't know if it's just movie magic or if it's the real deal. Like, what, what exactly is going on here? Oh, it's definitely the real deal. It's all about inertia and friction. Oh. So, these objects, they wanna stay here. That's what inertia means. Everything wants to stay what it's doing. Nothing wants to change. The only way to change it is to push it. So, in this case, we have this tablecloth, and I think that if you pull it hard enough, that these objects won't have enough time to react and they'll stay there. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, we can try. All right, Carson, do you want to try it? Yep. All right. Oh. oh, got all but one. I think I might do try that again. How hard do you think that was? Pretty hard because only one thing. Do you think you can get them all to stay on the table? Yeah. All right, let's try again. I didn't work, so I can definitely do it again. Right. Remember, you got to yank it down, down and hard. All right, round two. Oh, 
so close. It's just this ball. Do you want to try? Do you want to try one more time? Yeah. Yeah? Here we go. I believe in myself. I believe in you too. There you go. Hey, congrats. How'd that feel? Really good. Really good? You finally got third time's a charm. Yeah? Yeah. Well, Last for... time I only did it two tries. Oh, well, thanks for showing me how it's done. I appreciate it. And thank you, Sam. <laughs> thank you. All right, and now we're here with Curtis, and he's going to show us how to do this trick with this wine glass and, and make some sort of sound, I guess. Okay, so what happens is when you... You take your finger and you rub it around the rim of the glass and it makes this pretty little sound. And why exactly is that? This is caused because when you fill the glass with water it creates a sort of resonance point. When your finger mat matches around the glass at that frequency, then it matches that resonance frequency and it makes a really loud noise. Oh, cool. If you don't have that, like you just use a dry finger, you don't have the added wave capabilities of the water on your finger and you can't match the frequencies so, so you don't it, get a noise. Is it like a vibration or like what exactly yep. is it? It's that's a noise is. vibration. It's like the friction between your fingers and the top yep. the oh cool. Alright well awesome that's a pretty cool sound. And I'm sure you can probably try it at home if you want to. <laughs> Curtis can you explain to me a little what this is exactly? Yeah so when the girls take a flip flop they're they're gonna hit one of these little pipes right here. What happens when they do that is that they create a sound wave inside the pipe. The sound wave bounces off the walls and comes out these little holes out the top of the oh. pipes. The longer the hole is, the more low the note's going to be. So the pitch adjusts as the tubes are longer, yes? Yes. It gets lower as the tubes get longer oh, because there's it. more oscillations for the wave within the piping. All right, cool. Do you guys do you guys have a song that you guys want to play? Sure. He's going to jam it out with Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah. All right, let's hear it. Cool. Hey, there it is. Was that fun? How'd you guys feel about doing that? Yeah, I think it was really cool. Yeah. Mm, me too. So how, how, did, how did you think it changed? The vibration makes it work. The vibration? Yeah. So like when you hit it, it goes all the way up and shoots out, yeah. then it hits a note. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Five? <laughs> hey guys, I'm here with Anna and Ian, and we just saw this big volcano explosion out of that trash can. Can you guys explain to me a little bit of what just happened? Sure. So what happens a lot of times in explosive volcanic eruptions is the magma chamber gets under a lot of pressure from gases that turn from water to gas, and so that pressurizes the volcano and causes this big violent eruption. Yeah, so here we actually we are using the water to uh, simulate the uh, magmas and then the liquid nitrogen inside the uh, the plastic bottle to be the H2O or yeah or gas actually inside the volcano. So actually we are actually simulating the pressure difference down there and then when the pressure actually builds up it will actually explode just like a real volcano. Yeah. So I saw that there were like there are two bricks like taped mm -hmm. to the water bottle. What's that for? That's basically to hold the plastic bottle or magma chamber down at the bottom of the trash can to make just sure so we get an explosion. Doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then we have some packing peanuts and ping pong balls to represent pieces of rock and volcanic bombs that come out of actual volcanoes. Oh, cool! Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for explaining that to me, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm here with Chad and he's gonna walk us through to make some sort of goopy stuff. I'm not really sure what that is. Can it's you... a color changing slime. So what we're doing here is this slime, you can see on this countertop how green it is. But if you pick it up, then Whoa, it actually changes hey. orange. The color that it is depends on how much light is going through it. So what we did was we made the slime and we added a fluorescent dye, fluorescent compounds 
uh, look one color, but if you shine UV light on it, then it's actually going to glow a completely different color. Oh, I get it. And I think we have Fiona and Sam over here to show us how it's done. All right, do you guys want to pour them together and start mixing them? Mm-hmm. Ooh, here, I think it was right there. Ew, it's so goopy. Ooh. Whoa. Looks like boogers. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for showing me how to make this goopy slime that changes colors. Did you guys have fun making it? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah? Yep. Yeah? Sure. Well, thank you so much, guys. Have a great rest of your day here. Okay, looks like we found a new experiment. Okay, so what's going on here? It looks like we have a leaf blower. That's what I'm getting from this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the leaf blower and you're gonna place one of the balls on top okay. of here. And you're gonna see how the force of the air acts around the ball and it'll maintain equilibrium. Okay, cool. So okay. Let's, let's try you it. You wanna try it? Whoa! That's crazy! Okay, so let me try to walk through this. So the ball was there, but then the air was going around it so that it was able to stay afloat there? Right? The air pressure in there, it's higher than the pressure outside. Okay. So when it's going out, it's going out and then it's also kind of pushing from both ends. Okay. So there's kind of like a little pull in the middle. Yeah. So it just kind of stays there like a little gravitation. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. It, so you can put your hand under it like I did. Mm -hmm. And so like the air is going just around it and just, yeah. it's like coming from all ways. Yeah. The other air. Okay, cool. Well, that was so interesting. Thank you so much for showing yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here with Donovan from the IU Physics Club. And Donovan, can you just like walk me through what just happened with that presentation? Uh, yeah, so we started off with um, breaking essentially a um, tiny rubber ball. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my favorite ones. Yeah, so. It broke like glass, but it was rubber. Right, so the way that works is, is when things get really cold, the everything kind of slows down mm -hmm. inside. And so you slow it down enough that when it bounces on the ground, it can't jump, so it breaks just like wow. this. Wow, that was really cool. And then, what was the next one with the bed of nails? That was crazy. Uh, so the bed of nails, um, basically he's laying on like a, a bunch of tiny little points, but if you really think about it, that's just like what a bed is. It's a bunch of really yeah. tiny points. I mean, if you put your hand on a nail, you're mm -hmm. gonna like yeah, puncture your hand. Yeah, feel something. But if you put your hand on like a bunch of nails, it's gonna be nothing. Oh yeah. So. And then what about the potato cannon? Potato cannon, we you put a potato on one side and you close it off on uh -huh. the other side. And as you bring the two potatoes closer and closer together, you're making the air inside tight, but it's the same amount of gas that was in there from the beginning. Okay. So it builds up a lot of pressure. Yeah. So you're able to push across the room. Right. So what was, what was the last one that we did? Um, there were two cans. There was the soda can and the big can. So the soda can essentially made a... That had to do with magnets, right? Yeah, a giant magnet, and once it built up enough charge and he pulled the string, okay. it shot the can across the room. Wow. Now, the big can. The way that that works is, is we boiled water inside of it, and as the air inside is getting heated, mm -hmm. it's going out the top vent. Okay. And so we're basically pushing to get all of the air out. Okay because there's air in the atmosphere, right? And that's mm -hmm. always pushing down on us. Yeah. So if we have no air inside the can, we essentially have push it. a pressure difference. Or since there's no air on the inside, it all went out and was boiled out. And then so the air pressure from the outside made it crush in, correct? Right. Did I get that correct? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, well cool. Well thank you so much for explaining that, Donovan. Yeah, yeah. Great, okay. awesome. Hey guys, I'm here with John and he's going to explain to us a little bit about angular momentum. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's right. So angular momentum is 
a way to quantify how fast things are spinning. It depends on how far away they are from where they're spinning and how much mass it has. And angular momentum not only has a certain speed that you're going around with, but it also has a direction. So my finger is pointing along the direction of rotation here. And angular momentum, just like regular momentum, is conserved. That means no matter which direction, no matter which direction I move the rest of this, it wants to rotate in exactly the same direction. Huh. All right. What are these so, other gadgets you got? All right, this is called a flywheel. It's the same idea. I just get this going real fast. This is going to get real loud for just one second here. OK. And it's the exact same idea. As I let go, it wants to face that same direction. Whoa. But it feels a force due to gravity. And so in the end, the two just kind of come to a compromise. There's a torque due to gravity. There's a constant angular momentum that wants to go around here. And that, in the end, is going to make it spin around. And if there was no friction here, this would just keep spinning and spinning forever and ever. Forever? So yep. can I grab this? Yeah, you can grab that. Now, if you take this and you move it without changing the direction of that rotation, it's not gonna, you're not going to feel anything. But if you try and change the direction that that rotation is facing, yeah, you can feel it. I know just, you guys can't feel this, but this is really hard to control. And when you change the direction of rotation, that's much like a force. We call that a torque. And so that's how your simple household items, your drills and things like that work. They're applying torque to a system, making it spin or slowing it down from spinning. All right, guys, so we're here with Grace and Emily. And I think they're going to show us a little demonstration of how momentum works, I think? Angular momentum. Conservation of angular momentum. So what exactly is going to go on right now? So right now, when it's straight, there's no angular momentum oh, she's turning. in this way. But when she turns it, then it wants to go back to zero angular momentum. So it does the opposite. Oh. So she turns it one way, then it's trying to push her the other way. So she's turning on that turny thing by just by that? Right. How does this feel? Cool. That's cool? Well, great. How does that work? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So what's this you have right here? All right. So this is much like a top. Now, if I there's no magnets here. If there I no magnets. Oh, yeah. It, it's just going to fall over unless I apply a rotation to it again. So I'm applying a torque. I'm giving it angular momentum. And as I let go, it wants to keep that same direction. Gravity is going to apply a force, and they're going to come to a compromise. Whoa. And it will just keep spinning and spinning. If there was no friction, it would spin forever. And there are no magnets. There are no magnets. This is Whoa. all just angular momentum. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for explaining this all to me. Yeah, thanks for now visiting. Now I know so much more. All right. That's crazy. Ooh. Hey, guys. So I'm here with Noli and Laura. And we have a few other friends, too, with us. We have some snakes. Can you tell us a little bit about these snakes? Um, these snakes are both ball pythons, and they're native to Africa, um, but they're pets here. They're, they're pets? captive bred. Do they have any names? This is Marvin, oh. and... Visor? Oh, he's so soft. They would live in a, a grassland kind of habitat, and um, they'd spend most of their time hiding under a rock or in burrows under the ground. And then, mostly at night, they'll come out and hunt for things like uh, small rodents. They have special um, heat-sensing pits yeah. on the sides of their face, so they can use that to detect warm-blooded prey, like mice. And so they can hunt in darkness, because they don't have to rely on their vision. They can use the heat-sensing. Oh, cool. And how, how can you tell if they're male or female? You, it's really hard, and I actually don't know if this is male or female. We named him Marvin. <laughs> I was reading this earlier, and so they swallow their prey whole? It just, like... Gulp, just mm -hmm. like all in yeah. one? Really? Yeah. So what do you normally feed them at home? Uh, rats. Rats? Yeah. 
Is that his favorite food? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can do I do I get a whole one? Can I try? Sure. <gasps> okay. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah. So let's just go. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. Yeah, just make sure you. Yeah. Do you want to hold this? Trade. Okay. Oh. Uh, oh, this is this is so different than I thought I was gonna be. Oh my god! Uh, he's so soft. Oh hi. When he's flicking his tongue, he's exploring how you smell. That's me. Yep. Yeah, so he can. He has two ways of smelling. One is through his tongue. He picks up scents and brings them mm -hmm. to a special system that. He can enter from the inside of his mouth, and then he smells just like you would through his nose. Oh, cool. Well. So he's got a really good sense of smell with all that together. And how long do snakes normally live? Usually, uh, these type, this type of snake is up to 47. 47 years? Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. So how old is Pfizer? Like two, two and a half. Two, wow, he's a youngin. Well, awesome. Thanks for telling me all about them. And thanks for letting me hold a snake. He's so cute. Hey guys, we're here with Cyrus, Erica, and Eric. And Eric, can you explain to me a little bit about what all this is? Sure. So here we have lots of magnets. And the first and most important thing about magnets are is each magnet has two poles, north and south. So if you look at this here, you can see how these do not stick together no matter how hard you push them together because they have the same pole against each other. <sighs> so we're gonna add another one on top and drop it down. You see how it still doesn't stick to each other. So if we flip the pole around, then they stick together. Oh, so that's kind of the general idea about magnets. Each magnet has a north and a south pole. And what's what's this thing you have going on? Okay, with? so this is just like over there, except this is a magnet that we can turn on and off really fast. When it creates a magnet field um, inside inside the loop, the loop fights back and tries to create a magnetic field to cancel it out, but that actually ends up pushing the loop up and causing it to shoot up in the air. So. Well, Cyrus, do you want to touch the button? Sure. See what happens? It's going to be a little. Whoa! Whoa! Isn't that what happened? Yeah. Is that what you expected to happen? Because it shot up really fast because of the electricity. Okay. Well, cool. Is there what? What else can you do with this so little light this piece? This shows what happened in there specifically. So you see, this isn't connected to anything. Normally, when you have a light bulb, you plug it into the wall or turn a light switch on. But I'm just going to put it on top of there. And then when I hit the button, it's actually going to turn on because when you change the magnetic field really fast, it generates a current. Even though they're not even current, touching. Yeah, even though they're not even touching. So, huh. do you want to push the button for me? Oh, well, there you go. It lit up. When we turn the light on, we're turning the magnetic field on and off, but that generates a current in the wire around the magnetic field, which turns the light on. Oh, cool. Well, thank you so much for explaining that to me, Eric. <laughs> Did you guys have fun doing that? Do you guys want to try it one more time? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, cool. Thank you guys so much. That was so much fun. Hey guys, I'm with Josh, and we're next to this spinny contraption thing. Josh, can you explain exactly what's going on here? Sure. So the idea is, on Earth, we think of ourselves as static. So when you throw a ball, it goes straight, right? Yeah. However, the Earth is actually spinning. So we don't notice it because we've grown up in it, and it's constant. But the idea here is, you start at rest, and you can roll the ball, and it goes straight. But then when you rotate, the ball starts to curve. Oh. And so we asked them, can they roll to the person across from them? The answer is always, yeah, I can do it. No problem. Of course. But then it doesn't quite go straight. And they think it's so easy until they try. Yeah. You know, the, the physics way of saying this is, in our non-rotating frame, we don't notice these things because it looks like it's going straight. Oh. But in a rotating frame, to them, it's going straight. To us, it curves. Oh. Well, that makes a lot of sense. No bonus points. Uh, oh. All right, so now I'm here with Jack. Colin and Mason, and they just rode this spinny contraption thing. Guys, can you tell me a little bit about the experience you just had? Well, we were, we had a ball, and when it was spinning, we had to pass it uh, from across from us, 
but it kept on going to the right of us. Oh. So. so why do you think that happened? Um, I think because of the pull of gravity. The pull of gravity? So were you a little dizzy afterwards? Did it make you dizzy? A little bit, because after I got off, it was kind of wobbly and I... <laughs> Jack, can you tell me your experience with it? I, I just got off this morning. You just got off it? Did you have fun, though? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I'm glad you had fun. Well, thank you so much for talking to me, guys. <laughs>Hey guys, so we're here with Caitlin and Owen, Carter, and Zachary. And Caitlin's gonna explain us how we're gonna conduct electricity through ourselves, maybe? I don't know, what's going on? Well, we've got two plates sitting out here, and there are some electrons on the zinc plate that are trying to move over to the copper plate, but they need a little help. So we're going to make a human bridge to conduct electricity through Owen here to go from the zinc plate to the copper plate. All right. Uh oh. Why don't you Good put luck. both your hands there? Whoa. Whoa! You are super electric. So what does that like meter thing do? What does that mean? That is measuring the um, electric current that is moving through the whole circuit. And the oh. circuit is broken until a human can put their hands there. And as soon as your hands are on the plates, the circuit is complete. So can you do it with multiple people? Let's give it a shot. Do you guys want to try it? Okay, sure. Look at that. Uh, do you guys feel that at all? Nothing at all. Nothing? Not nope. Really. Not what about you? You don't feel anything either? So why don't they feel anything? Well, the electricity is moving through some natural salt in your body. Do you notice that your hands sometimes get a little sweaty? That's got salt in it, and that's going through the salt within you, and that helps the electricity move just very naturally in a way that you can't even feel. Okay. Mm. Who knew? <laughs> Wow, I've had so much fun today at the IU Science Fest watching all these cool experiments and explosions. Remember to visit our website at FridayZone.org to watch past episodes, play games, and see behind the scenes photos. And remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. We'll catch you back next week. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. The IU School of Education, dedicated to improving, teaching, and learning in a diverse and rapidly changing world. More at education.indiana.edu. Smithville Fiber, the GigaCity Company, a philanthropic community partner since 1922 and proud supporter of numerous community organizations. More information at smithville.com. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television Stations. Thank you. The Friday Zone is online all the time. FridayZone.org is where you'll find information about the show, how to get in touch with us with questions or ideas, and read our behind the scenes blog. It's also where you can watch this episode, past episodes, and segments too. There's even web exclusive content you won't see on the air. So check us out at FridayZone.org. <laughs>